I did a video a while back on the golden russet apple, my experience with it, and basically the fact that I can't ever eat any, even though I planted trees, you know, years and years ago, like a dozen years ago or something. And that's because of bears and pack rats and stuff. And I went in that video and I bagged what apples were on the tree down in the slower meadow here. And we're going to go see if anything's there. And I'm not expecting a lot because I walked by there maybe like a month ago and looked and a bunch of the bags were on the ground empty so there was something like maybe a possum or a raccoon getting into the tree getting the apples and then eating them out of the bags and this is like it's so far down there that it's just kind of like out of sight out of mind right so that's actually the only time i think i've been by there but i did glance uh, from this orchard down there the other day and there are still apples hanging in the tree so we're going to go see what's there and if there's anything there we're going to taste it Ooh, look at these. Are those uh, passe croissant? Is there a tag? Okay, well, we'll come back to this and look for the tags. Yeah, so in spite of planting two trees of this, I only harvested one cracked crappy apple ever. See, they're getting the bags out of the trees. Well, there's one comice anyway. Comice, outstanding pair at its best. Look at this. I don't think any of these, well, it looks like a couple might have fruit in them. There's a fruit in that one. See, this is what happens. It's like just a war with the wildlife. Just, they're constantly trying to get your stuff. I mean, who can blame them? Okay, it actually looks ripe, too. Interesting. Here's a little one. So there were four left on the tree out of you know, all of these were apples. It looks like there might be one there with an apple in it. That one has an apple in it. I do like these paper bags because I can just leave them to rot if I don't want to pick them up. There's maybe like seven or eight. This is I could take these lights down now. I don't need them anymore, but they worked. Okay, these work for the bear. Now, the other thing that happened is last time I came by here, I had just been on that ridge right there. And just a little ways down, there's a big fir tree. It's right behind this fir tree here. You see, can't see it. And I was walking along deer hunting and I spooked a young bear. It was sleeping on the ridge, I think. And it ran up that tree, uh, like, you know, 30 feet in front of me. See that bear cub right there? I just spooked him. He was sleeping, I think, by the base of this tree. Is out deer hunting. There he is right there. He should meet up this tree. I'm gonna get the hell out of here though because his mom might be around. And I was like, yeah, they're just hanging out here waiting for the apples to ripen maybe. But apparently the lights worked. And the reason I used the lights is because they worked last year. I was surprised they worked last year, but they did. So I went for it again. So I'm gonna pick all the fruit out of here so there's no reason for them to come in. So really at that time, I should have gotten in here with like a live trap or something and tried to catch whatever it is that was eating these apples. Again, it was probably a possum or a raccoon. This is what bears will do to your trees. Look at that. This was one of the best trained, nicest, well-growing trees I had. And then two or three different years, it's been hammered by bears. And uh, it's just sad. That was the top. It just goes to show that, you know, I was overly optimistic about these trees surviving the bears without some kind of protection. Passe croissant, it's like a winter pear, and you keep it cold, and then when you're ready to eat it, you bring it in and warm it up. These are real nice-looking specimens. This is some of the nicest fruit I've harvested this year of anything. Some of them are packed and scarred and stuff, but there's quite a few solid ones in here that I could try keeping. All right, let's go find a comfortable spot to taste a couple of these apples. All right. Well, the moment of truth has arrived. Will this live up to even my own hype? Um, let's find out. I've eaten a lot of apples over the years. It's been years since I've had a golden russet at all. Who knows, maybe I built this up in my mind into the most incredible apple in the world. But to my memory, it's still the best russet I've ever had. I did have a, Ashmead's kernel this year 
that was really, really good. And I thought, man, this could give, you know, Golden Russet a run for its money. And then I thought, maybe this is a Golden Russet. Like maybe I picked one up off the ground and then forgot. Uh, when I was down there because it was that good none of the Ashmeets kernel have been as good as that one so yeah maybe I've built this up in my mind into something bigger than it really is I think we'll start with um, one of the greener firmer looking ones let's try this one are you ready is this going to be disappointing wow Yeah, man, it's really good. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. This one here looks like about the largest and ripest. It has a little bit of squish to it. So, this is one of the worst um, apple years I can remember in terms of the quality of apples. I mean, the Wixens are barely worth eating. They're just not very good. Uh, Bite Me is not very good this year compared to last year and um, almost every year before. And uh, I think that may be because we had probably a couple weeks of smoke that was so bad that it basically, we lost a bunch of ripening days probably because of this, this terrible smoke. But uh, these are still really excellent and there's a couple things I remember about this apple. One was eating it and just wanting to get after it and just keep chewing to try to get more of that great flavor out of the pulp. And the flavor kind of keeps going, you know, like you keep chewing and it keeps going, the, the sweetness and the flavor. It's extremely sweet, but they have a similar quality of like intense uh, fruitiness or richness of flavor and a harmony of all the components, like the sugar, the acid, and the flavor, and the the fact that the flavor and sugar come up really quick, you know, and they, they really come forward really fast, but then they, they plateau and they stay. And you, if you keep chewing, you keep getting more flavor. Not all apples are like that. So yeah, I would say still, this is probably, you know, the best russet I've ever had. Um, maybe that one ash means I had this year could give it some competition, but literally none of the other ash means I've had this year off the same tree have been as good and I don't know what's up with that. So my thoughts on golden russet are it should be grown more. It's the best russet I've ever had overall, all things considered. We should be breeding with this apple. This is one of the great American apples and it just doesn't look like a grocery store apple. So no, you know, people aren't going to breed with it. And if they do, they're going to use what they want out of it and they're going to throw away a lot of the, you know, potential because it's, you know, not going to match uh, a preconceived idea of what a consumer wants or what the market has trained consumers to want. Now I do know of at least one apple that uses this as a parent called uh, Gold... Golden Nugget. Golden Nugget. And it's a cross between Cox's Orange Pippin and Golden Russet. But, you know, that's kind of a fluke and that's an older apple. Like, at this point, I really doubt that uh, commercial breeders would even, you know, touch this as a parent. If they did, they would breed a lot of the best qualities out of it in pursuit of uh, narrow goals. So we should be using this more in breeding. I used it the first year that I crossed apples. I crossed it with grenadine. So I do have those crosses. They are coming into bearing. Uh, a few of them have been promising and interesting, especially the little one that I've been calling uh, Ice Princess. And I, I want to do more crosses with it, and I have done more crosses, but I want to continue to do more crosses with it, get more p uh, different parents crossed with it, and then start to take those parents and cross them together or, or something like that. Definitely, I'm interested in this in the pursuit of breeding a red flesh russet. Imagine this level of intensity and flavor and quality with red flesh and berry flavor mixed in yes please so I've already got a good start on that ten years ago uh, crossing this with grenadine again those are producing and now I have those to use as parents to try to you know go forward so I can back cross them uh, to golden russet or eventually to other crosses with golden russet golden russet with another red fleshed apple cross those together and see what uh, what happens so very intriguing i'm um, really glad to have some of these to eat intense very very sweet 
So far, this less ripe one is a little bit better. Mm. 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 One of the signs of a great apple is if I'm eating it and I just, my teeth just keep chomping and trying to get get out that, that pulp to get more of the flavor out. As soon as I start chewing this, that's how I feel about it. And I want to chew it all the way up. I do not want to stop eating that apple even to finish this video. And that's the best endorsement right there. And I'm picky. You know, I'm spoiled by having tasted hundreds of and grown hundreds of apples here. Uh, all kinds of exciting stuff. And I'm telling you, this needs to be grown more and it, ne and it needs to be bred with. So that's my assessment. I'll be putting the seeds from these into my apple seed medley mix, which is just, I've just put all the really interesting good apples that I eat through the season into a batch of seeds and uh, sell those on the website. I'll be making more intentional crosses. Hopefully, if I have a good bloom in the spring, I'll have pollen for this as well. Okay, I'm not going to eat that right now. We're going to finish this video. So I wanted to talk about this pear for a second. This is a Passe Croissant. A lot of the pictures you'll see of this pear, if you look them up, they have red wax on the stem. So I'm going to wax some of these because they actually dry out through the, the broken stem here. And this is a winter pear, so you keep it in a cold shed or the refrigerator or somewhere, you know, cool. And then when you want to eat them, you plan ahead, bring them into a warm room for a while and they'll ripen up. And they're quite good. And uh, how cool is it to have uh, fruit in the winter like that? You know, it's like a keeping apple, except it just kind of stays there until you're ready and then you can bring it and ripen it at your uh, leisure. So that's pretty neat. I got some nice specimens of that. I'm going to dip some of the stems in wax and leave uh, some undipped and put them in a cold place and just sit, just watch them. Like don't even eat them. Just, just watch them because that's more interesting to me than actually eating them at this point. Grafter plant a golden russet, one of the great American apples. It's not exactly in, endangered but it's criminally undergrown and uh, should be in more collections for sure. Keep in mind that when you plant it, it's a real weird grower. So if you graft it onto like a Franken tree, it might behave oddly, just um, it's tippy. It grows long sections of bare stem. It's difficult to train and, and stuff. So it's not a bad idea to plant a dedicated tree. Of course, that could be a dwarf as well. It really doesn't play well with itself or with you or with others or with anything. It's just a weird grower. So, you know, plant a dwarf tree maybe and just let it grow. So if you're interested in different uh, apple varieties and the qualities and how they taste and everything, or apple breeding or grafting, check out some of these playlists over here or here or wherever I put them. Graft a tree, plant a tree. So good. If I wasn't wanting to save these seeds, I would just eat the whole core. In fact, I already ate some of the seeds. It's hard to stop. Not much left. 